RV batteries are arguably the heart of your RV. They are what run everything from your lights to your leveling jacks, and they can get pretty expensive. So today I'm gonna walk you through battery basics, how to pick the perfect batteries for you, and then how to maintain your newly purchased heart once you install it in your rig. This is your ultimate RV battery guide for beginners. You got this. Before we talk about battery options, we need to get on the same page about some terminology, starting with voltage. When it comes to RVs, 12 volts is king. 12 volts is what your lights, your leveling jacks, and all the circuit boards in your appliances run off of. Now, sometimes you can find a killer deal on six volt batteries. You can actually wire two six volt batteries in series to get one 12 volt battery. If we remember from science class, series is when we connect the negative terminal of one battery to the positive terminal of another. And then these two wires go off to the distribution panel to power your rig. Boom, science, you got this. Now you may also hear people talking about having 24 volt batteries in their rig. Those batteries are most likely for a solar setup and are powering the 120 volt side of things. Despite being batteries, they are actually completely separate and have nothing to do with the DC power in your rig. I'm not gonna talk too much about 24 volt batteries here. I just wanted you to know that they existed. So if somebody talked about it at a campfire in a park, you didn't feel confused. I'm looking out for you. Now, the other biggie when it comes to batteries is amp hours. While voltage tells us how much oomph we have to power our devices, amp hours tells us how long we can power those devices for. A 100 amp hour battery is gonna give us 100 amps for one hour. Let's say we have a light in our rig that pulls four watts. We can use Watt's law to do some math and figure how long we could run that one light off of our battery if it was the only thing on. If the math portion of things goes a little over your head, that's totally fine. The main takeaway is that more amp hours means a longer time getting to run things on your rig. Now, obviously you might wanna power more things than just one light, or you might be a boondocker that wants to be able to go longer without having to plug in. This is where we can get multiple 12 volt batteries and wire them in parallel to increase the amp hours. To do this, we're gonna wire all of the positive terminals together and then all of the negative terminals together. And then these wires on the end go off to the distribution panel to power the rig. When we wire this way, we can add the amp hours of all of our batteries together. So if we have two 100 amp hour batteries, we can get 200 amp hours. But remember, we wire in series to get us to 12 volts, and then we can wire our 12 volt batteries in parallel to increase the amp hours. We good? If the wiring portions of things is what's getting you scratching your head, just take away that the voltage is the oomph that we need and that number is 12, and amp hours is how long we can last. You got this. Our final quick and easy thing to know is that the battery in your coach and the battery in your car are two different kinds of batteries despite them both being 12 volts. Your coach battery is made to power devices over a long period of time, where your car battery is meant to give a big jolt of energy all at once to start things. Think of your RV battery, the batteries we've been talking about, as marathon runners and the battery in your car as a sprinter. Neither type of runner would be great at the other's job and the same goes for batteries. So don't mix and match. With all of that out of the way, now we can finally talk about battery options. Starting with your older deep cycle flooded batteries. These guys are your cheapest option. You can find them on older rigs, but they're getting kind of hard to come by. Flooded batteries require that once or twice a year, you take a cap off the top and check the liquid level inside. And if you need to, you could pour some distilled water in there to top off the liquid levels. While this can make you feel like a mad scientist, it can be potentially dangerous because you're interacting with a container of battery acid. Splashes and leakages are always an option, and I don't know about you, but battery acid is not a part of my skincare routine. You also can't store these batteries on their sides because you've got to worry about leaking battery acid everywhere. So if you're trying to fit these into a small compartment, that can really limit your options. You also can't fully discharge these batteries without damaging them. In fact, it's recommended that you only discharge flooded batteries down to 50%. 50. So those 100 amp hours you thought you were buying, you can only use 50 of them. That's like me selling you a mimosa and then telling you you can only drink half of it. 
I'm not about that life. No, thank you. No, when we talk about that 50% discharge, a lot of people get confused and think the voltage is gonna go down 50% as well. This isn't the case. Your voltage will go down a little bit as your battery discharges, but you'll still be in the realm of 12 volts, not the six that a lot of people are thinking. It's the amp hours we are cutting in half, not the voltage. If we extend the mimosa metaphor, your mimosa doesn't get less alcoholic as you drink it, there's just less mimosa left to drink. Finally, flooded batteries off-gas toxic gases that you don't wanna be breathing. So they have to be stored in a compartment with venting to the outside, which again, cuts down on our storage options. If your rig came with flooded batteries, I would maintain them for as long as you can and then when they die, I personally would replace them with something that is safer and easier to work with. But these are the OG RV batteries, so it's what we'll compare everything to. Next, we move on to AGM batteries. These are an improvement on our traditional flooded batteries because they're sealed. That's right, no more having to top off liquid levels, no more potential battery leaks, and no more toxic fumes. Because you don't have to worry about leaks or off-gassing, you can store AGM batteries on their sides or in enclosed compartments, which completely opens up your storage options. They also tend to be smaller, lighter, and charge faster than traditional flooded batteries, and with typical use will last you two to three times as long. You can see why we're moving towards these as an industry, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows in the AGM world. Similar to flooded batteries, you're not supposed to discharge AGMs past 50%. So we're back to the mimosa problem. And with all the positive AGM batteries have, they are almost double the cost of flooded batteries, which can be a big investment, especially for something that isn't considered a sexy purchase for your RV. I do, you can send me pictures of your beautifully arranged battery bank. I'll gush over them for you all day, but maybe that's just me. Overall, AGMs are gonna be the right option for many people. They are safer, last longer, and work better than their traditional counterparts, but they still have some drawbacks. Enter the lithium battery, the final entry in our battery showdown. Lithium batteries are what happen when you take all of the positives of AGM batteries and crank them to 11. Then you took the biggest downside to AGM and traditionals and threw it out the window. Lithium batteries can potentially charge four times faster than AGMs while taking up half of the space and a third of the weight. This can be life-changing for smaller rigs where every inch and pound really matters. Similar to AGMs, there's no chances of leaks or off-gassing with lithium, so you can store them on their sides and in enclosed spaces. You can channel your inner Dr. Seuss. You can store them in a house. You can store them with a mouse. You can store them with a blouse. And the biggest reason to become a lithium lover in my book and the reason they throw AGMs and flooded batteries out of the water is that you can just charge these guys to 95% and they will still come back kicking every time. This is like getting to drink every drop of that mimosa you ordered. And you know me, I don't like to leave a mimosa untouched. But, and for many people this is gonna be a big but, lithium batteries can cost twice as much as AGMs. Now you also need to keep in mind that lithium lasts a lot longer. AGM batteries will last you around a thousand cycles, whereas lithium batteries will last you three to 5,000 cycles. And even after that, they only lose about 10% efficiency, so they're still more efficient than AGMs after all of that time. Lithium batteries do cost twice as much as AGMs, but they will last you over twice as long. So in the long run, you're actually saving money. It's just gonna be a big expense up front. And that's it. Those are sort of the three big key players when it comes to batteries. So you've played the dating game with your battery options and you've chosen the new love of your life. But anyone that's been in a long-term relationship knows that finding the one is not even 50% of the battle. Maintaining the relationship is where it's at. Here's what you can do to keep your batteries working for as long as possible. Get a good converter. If you have AGM or flooded batteries, get away from a single stage converter. Single stage converters charge your battery the same way, whether it's almost dead in the middle of its charge or fully charged. They're super inefficient and can cook your batteries if left on too long. You want a three stage converter that's gonna read where your battery's charging level is at and adjust what it's doing accordingly. If you have lithium, you need a converter charger that is made to work with lithium. Some converters have a switch on the side that lets you flip it over and tell the converter that it's charging lithium, and those are totally fine. 
But if your converter doesn't have that switch, you need to make sure that you get one that is made for charging lithium specifically. Look into a battery monitoring system. These are gonna allow you to track the state of charge of your batteries. These are really useful no matter what kind of battery you have, but they are crucial if you have AGM or flooded batteries so you don't go below that 50% discharge and start damaging your power supply. No mixing and matching. Do not mix and match your batteries. You want all of the batteries in your bank to be of the same kind, the same brand, and the same age. This is gonna help all of the batteries in your bank charge and discharge at the same rate, which will increase the lifespan of your batteries. I love a good flight tasting, but this is a moment to have the same flavor across the board. And then give your batteries some love. Do the needed maintenance for your batteries. If you have AGM or lithium, they claim to be maintenance free, but you should still take a look at them twice a year. If you have flooded batteries, make sure you're keeping an eye on those levels and topping it off with distilled water as necessary. And with all batteries, look at tightening your connections. We've all heard that driving your rig down the street is like creating a mini earthquake, and it's true. And those earthquakes can loosen the connection on your batteries. Loose connections mean more resistance, means your battery is working harder to get you the power that you want. Don't do that to your new friend. If you see any corrosion on your battery terminals, go ahead and turn off your battery disconnect and then disconnect your battery wires, starting with the negative and then the positive. Once completely disconnected, mix one tablespoon of baking soda with one cup of water and go at those terminals with an old toothbrush. And then clean off that paste and slather your terminals in petroleum jelly to prevent future corrosion. Then you can hook everything back up. And that's it, my friends. You are now a battery master. You can check out this video to learn how to fix your RV furnace all on your own, or you can hit up the RV Repair Woman blog at rvrepairwoman slash blog, where you can check out a whole bunch of posts and articles I've done about maintaining your rig, repairing things on your own, and tips and tricks that most techs aren't gonna tell you about. You got this.